viewers, friends, esteemed colleagues, and shoe hounds. It's Ed Bud here, I'm back with a race recap from the recent Blackmoor Vale Half Marathon. Firstly, I just want to say I'm blown away by all the fantastic, positive, encouraging support from all of you across Strava and the channel. I really do appreciate it and I've tried my very best to reply to every single one of you in any way I can really. If I've missed anybody, I do apologise. I really, really do appreciate all your support and it does make the world feel like a better place. So that Blackmore Vale Half Marathon was the Sunday just past the 2nd of February and it's a local event for me. It's about 15 minutes something drive uh, to get to it nice and easy and the race kicked off around right about 11 o'clock so it meant that good old Ed Bud managed to get a half decent night's sleep for a change before a race. Certainly going to be a benchmark for fitness for me. It's not going to be a PR course in any way. Uh, the elevation profile is round about 900 foot of elevation gain across the course. So certainly not one for a PR, but one to improve that kind of mental strength and test that fitness. Of course, typically with a race, I had a gig the night before, this time in Highcliffe out near the New Forest. Managed to get some decent rest this time around though, and I felt really great on the morning of the race. Got some kind of range of motion, some stretching in, and fueled up a couple of hours before. On arrival, I noted it was about 11 degrees centigrade, so really mild temperatures for February here in the UK. There was a bit of wind reported, probably about 14, 15 miles an hour. It was kind of gusty, really. It didn't seem to be coming from any particular direction. It was kind of swirling around a little bit. So that was a little bit of a concern, knowing that part of the course was on some high elevation up on the hill. So I knew that was probably going to test me a little bit when I got there. I got a bit of warm up in, around about one mile. There was a group of guys kind of bopping along at a nice speed. So I kind of tagged along with those guys around about seven minutes 30 per mile, just for a mile north of the race course. Some country lanes really, just a tiny bit of elevation there, just to get things kind of moving. Made my way into the race pack. There were lots of Yeovil runners there. It's really great to see so many people. Huge support from some of the other running clubs as well. Some of the clubs had maybe 10, 15 people there. So really great to see on a Sunday morning. That race kicked off promptly at 11 o'clock. Um, couldn't really hear some of the announcements. I'm not sure what was going on there. Maybe the technology had failed them or something, but there was some sort of indication and everybody started. Um, the race started on a grassy field. It didn't seem too uneven. I think I maybe got a little bit lucky. Uh, certainly some potholes there when I walked back across the field at the end of the race. So the first mile of the course is mainly downhill. I just let myself kind of flow down that first mile, going a little bit above my target pace, just trying to keep steady pace really. I had the words of Matt Sparks in my head, kind of telling me to, you know, start off nice and slowly. I think it was Monty as well who watches the channel, just to start slow and trying to finish the race strong, just trying to keep calm and sort of grow into the race. Also, I knew from sort of mile two or three that there was a steady incline um, over around about four miles really so I needed to keep a bit of energy in reserve to ensure I really didn't tank at that point. It's all about kind of in my head about conserving power so making sure I didn't expel too much energy knowing that there's lots and lots of elevation gain within the course. So the first three miles splits were 639, 656 and 705. You can almost see that conscious effort from me to kind of well hang on a minute we've got to rein things in a little bit here this is a 13 mile or 13.1 mile race. We need to make sure we've got the energy needed later. So as we start to go up and reach some of those peaks, miles four, five, and six, I kind of pulled the pace down a little bit whilst feeling it actually on the six mile as you reach the very top of the elevation. Managed to keep the cadence actually really consistent throughout. I was around about 170 steps per minute. So keeping things as consistent as I could. Heart rate over the course of that first sort of six miles didn't top out over 155 beats per minute. So really happy in terms of the heart rate. I was kind of into that tempo, just coming up towards that threshold kind of heart rate. Mile six was a real teller. I kind of had pulled back right to about seven minutes 37. It was really tough going up one of the hills. I noticed some people that were miles out ahead of me at one point suddenly were very close by. So I knew I was doing a decent job of keeping my pace consistent. It's kind of a real psychological boost when you get to that P 
peak um, at mile six because you know that the majority of the rest of the course is all downhill. I say all downhill because the last mile was a real killer. So the next few miles, miles seven, eight and nine, send you back down kind of the hill. Uh, you can see some amazing views actually from there. I think the elevation decline there is about 275 foot. Then miles 10 through to 12, it's undulating hills again, just kind of climbs and short declines. And you're starting to think I've not got an awful lot left at that point. There was a couple of tasty inclines there that, yeah, I could hear people really weren't too pleased about. Mile seven and nine, I was pretty much bang on that sort of target half marathon pace that I'm looking for if I want to break one hour 30. I just found it difficult between miles 10 and 12 really to get any sort of natural rhythm. There were just so many kind of short inclines and declines. It was really tough to get into that rhythm and that kind of target pace. Mile 12 through to the finish, I have to be honest guys, was a real, real test. There's about 100 foot of elevation over the course of the last mile. And as you well know, if you've done a half marathon, certainly if you're moving at a decent pace, that when it comes to that last section, that's not really what you want to hear. I saw many a runner struggling at that last section of the hill. I know Kev Doherty, he was way ahead of me at one point. I could suddenly see him. I thought, what's, ha what's happened to Kev? And he was, he, he was walking up part of that hill. I have to be honest, I did at the end there. It was just really tough. Certainly character building stuff though. And as I came up the last incline and turned left back into the field, certainly felt really, really great. Um, I hadn't looked at my watch time the whole way through the event. I deliberately turned off the time display, so I just had pace, I had heart rate and distance, nothing else. It actually felt quite liberating not to be kind of constantly looking down at my watch at time. I was more looking at the level of effort I was putting in, the pace that I was achieving, and also the heart rate. So looking at those three things and kind of putting in honest efforts up those inclines uh, when I could. I kind of felt a little bit like I imagine Luke felt in Star Wars when Obi-Wan tells him to put the blast shield down on his helmet and then he's got to try and fight against the kind of training droid. It felt a little bit like that. Kind of trying to be a bit at one with the force. I think I'll probably adopt that same policy again in the next race. Just not worrying about time, worrying about the level of effort that I'm putting in and looking at pace. Pace on average of 7 minutes 13 per mile. Strava gave me a grade adjusted pace on this race at 7 minutes 05 per mile. So came in with a time of 1 hour 36 minutes and 25 seconds. So well off 1 hour 30 that you know I'm kind of aiming to try and achieve within the half marathon distance. But I'm over the moon and here's why. So with close to 900 feet of elevation gain in this race, I got within a couple of minutes of my half marathon PR. I'm really, really pleased with that. I did one hour 34.29, I think it was, at the Huron Half Marathon last June, and that's a pretty much totally flat course. When I look back to the Salisbury Half Marathon in September, I think that had about 154 foot of elevation gain. So this course was substantially more difficult than both of those other courses, and yet I still got within a minute or so, or a minute and a half or something, of those times. Amazingly pleased with that when you look at it on paper, when you look at the stats. Got to be pleased with that. <laughs> Apart from that very last mile, it was a really strong effort. Didn't feel tired, the legs felt good. In fact, the next morning, got out for three recovery miles, about eight minutes, 10 per mile. I was using the Infinity Run actually, worked out really well as a recovery shoe. I think it was getting that race pace just right, the level of effort just right, being respectful of the elevation. So really, really happy with the time I achieved here. It certainly shows that the level of fitness has improved and on a course with far less elevation, I think I'm gonna get nice and close to that one hour 30 target that I've got in mind. Gotta be honest, testament to the shoes, I feel pretty good, apart from the very tops of my legs there. Still a little sore, I wouldn't say I'm in any discomfort or anything. And I'll certainly be looking to get back to training later on today. These felt great in the half size up. I They just melted away really, I didn't think about them whatsoever. I just concentrated on my running, concentrated on my form. Every time I felt that form starting to kind of drift away from me, I consciously made an effort to sort of get back up, make sure the rhythm was good, focusing on where I was going. 
Some of those country lanes were quite muddy and the next percent handled them really well actually. There was not one moment where I felt like I was going to slip over, slide, anything like that. Uh, certainly last year on that course in the 4% flyknit, uh, there was a couple of moments, uh, a little bit hairy where I was slipping and sliding around, albeit conditions on the roads there were a little icy. This time around, weather was kind of perfect really for me. Use some half tights and the Aeroswift shorts plus my running vest for the local club that I'm a member of. Nike running gloves on the hands just to keep my hands warm. There was a point where I thought perhaps I didn't need those but a bit later on uh, the sun kind of disappeared and it was a little colder then and I was quite glad of them. So overall really happy with the level of effort over the course of the run to have cleaned up pretty well as well. They didn't look like this at the end of the race. So overall, really, really happy with this time and the level of effort put in. And it's certainly a fantastic training kind of activity for the Yeovil Half Marathon at the end of March. As I say, getting in only a minute over the Yeovil Half Marathon time with a load more elevation gain. I think I can certainly beat my personal best on that and get a little bit closer to that one hour 30 target. If you've got any questions on the run, please post them in the comments below. I'll be more than happy to answer them. There's a couple of interesting things I picked up on this week. Um, I do get Runner's World magazine. Uh, this issue is really interesting. It's got lots and lots of ecology, um, environmental kind of related articles. If you're that way inclined, certainly do pick up a copy. They even call it the green issue. There's some articles in there about sort of uh, shoes that have been created that are completely of uh, recycled materials and stuff like that. Very interesting read. Music this week comes from Miles Davis. I've been listening to Kind of Blue here for a while actually on my sort of more easy day runs. Really wonderful stuff. Leaves you feeling very calm and kind of very thoughtful. Another jazz artist to check out if you haven't already is John Coltrane. Wonderful sounds. Again, Nice and calming, thoughtful music if you want something to just take you away from the hustle and bustle of everyday life. Of course, I don't go out of my record player um, jogging around. That would be, quite frankly, ridiculous. Hope you've enjoyed the video, guys, and I do appreciate you watching through to the end. Thanks for all your messages of support. They are very much appreciated. Please make sure you subscribe if you haven't done already and give the video a thumbs up. Helps us to push us up the charts. Make sure you share the video with your friends. My name's Ed Budd and I'll be seeing you.